Hello everyone, this is Shiva Sapkota. Today I have a Tesla video for Tesla Model 3 and Model Y on winter driving tips and tricks. This might be your first time driving your Tesla in the winter and I wanted to provide you with some tips on what I do, what to look out for, what to do and what not to do, how to precondition your battery and things like that so that you are better equipped with this winter and have a great Tesla driving experience. If you're new here, I make Tesla videos covering wide range of Tesla topics. Uh, if you like what you see today in this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. Let's get started with today's video. Let's start with cold weather tips in general, and then we'll move into snow and ice conditions. Warm battery is a happy battery during the winter. Warming your battery before each trip can conserve energy. The scheduled departure feature that you have when you go when you tap into battery icon here, and if you go to schedule, right here it says depart at, and if you are gonna go to work at six in the morning, it will precondition your car by that time so that the battery is warm, your climate control is good in the cabin, so you are ready to go. I highly recommend that if you leave at a set schedule every single day. And you can even exclude weekends. So you can just do precondition the cabin on weekdays only if you work just a weekday jobs. If you don't have a set departure time every day, you can also take some time right before your trip to go to the Tesla app and then on climate, you can turn on your seat heaters as well as you can turn on the defroster. So if I just press on that, you saw the car activated the defrost. That means it is gonna turn on high and warm up your battery as well as warm up your car. A blue snowflake icon might appear right here on the battery if your car battery is too cold to access all of its stored energy. When this icon is displayed, you may also notice the battery power and regenerative braking that you see right here are limited. Once the battery is warm, the snowflake will disappear on its own. The charging, driving, and precondition are all the ways that you can get rid of that snowflake and make sure that the battery is warm. I drive very conservatively during the winter to conserve as much energy that I can from the battery and get the maximum range out of my battery. A couple of tips that I have is not driving too fast. So driving at moderate speed because speed causes a lot of energy loss from your car. And then also not having that instant acceleration. Like in the summertime, that's fine. I have enough range. I'm not losing any range. So I can just take off and, you know, go super fast. But that takes a lot of energy from your battery. And especially in the winter when you're trying to conserve your battery to get the maximum amount of range, um, I highly recommend not doing that. And what helps me personally is if I turn on the chill mode. It helps me not go too fast. Not only chill mode conserve on battery, uh, for me, it also is less dangerous during the winter time. So if you have an instant acceleration, your car might become uncontrollable if you are stuck in the snow. So turning on that chill mode actually really helps me feel good about my ability to control my car and conserve energy. To turn on the chill mode, all you have to go to driver setting, driving, and right here, is, there's the standard acceleration versus chill acceleration. And finally, I maximize on my seat heaters. So instead of using the cabin heater, I turn on my seat heater and that kind of helps with the cabin heating uh, as well as conserve a lot in my battery. So I don't leave the, the defrost on all the time. I only do it when I need it and I rarely turn on the cabin heater so that you know I'm not depleting that energy from the car. Because what I found in my personal experience over the past two years is every time I turn on the, the cabin heater, my range just goes down like crazy because it is using more watt hour per mile uh, to to maintain my car with the cabin heater. So as I said, just seat heater, they're great. They help a lot. Another tip I have is to leave your car plugged in all the time when not in use. I had to make that a habit. As soon as I get home, I plug in my car. I don't have to be charging. I have a scheduled charging that the charger turns on in the middle of the night when the electricity rates are low. 
So I, I'm not charging all the time, but my car is plugged in. That way, when Tesla is trying to maintain that battery temperature, it uses the electricity from your home rather than using the energy from your Tesla's battery so that it helps you maintain that battery level and your range and not use your energy from your battery. So I highly recommend leaving that your car plugged in all the time. Another tip is to limit checking the Tesla app. If you're like me, I randomly open up my Tesla app sometime. I don't know why. I I just check the app to make sure, I guess, my car is still in my garage. I don't know. But that is really bad uh, because every time you're doing that, you're waking up the car and you just energy to wake up the car. So you're depleting your battery by doing that and you're gonna have less range when you are on the road. So if you want to conserve the battery range, uh, limit using the app, only only check your app when you need to. Again, I'm guilty of that. I check my app a lot. Uh, I have no idea why. I'm just excited about the car, I guess. If you're ever stuck in a snow or mud and you just can't seem to get out of it, you put it in drive, you put it in reverse, and you're just your car's just stuck, like you can't move, you can go to the driver setting and turn on the slip start. What slip start does is it lets your wheels to continue spinning and then it puts full f power on the motor, uh, effectively getting you out of that situation. Uh, keep in mind that it does disable your traction control, so it will be a little hard to control your car. So I don't recommend it unless it is absolutely necessary that you're really stuck and you need to get out of that situation. This happens to me on my driveway. My driveway is a little bit steep. So I do have to use slip start every now and then when the driveway has still has a little bit of snow and my car seems to get stuck uh, in my driveway. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty neat feature. If you're expecting snow or ice buildup, place your wipers in the service mode position and then also deactivate your mirror from auto folding. To do that, you go over here and then you go to service and right here it says wiper service mode. And when you do that, the wiper kind of rays on your car and stay at an angle so that it is easier to defrost uh, from that. It's not stuck on the lowest position. Another thing you can do is to go to quick controls right here on mirror setting if you go to mirrors, you can turn off the mirror auto fold right here. So when you turn this off, the mirror are not going to auto fold. So in case it is frozen, it prevents the mirror from auto folding during freezing conditions. Couple of accessories that I would recommend would be winter tires. If you live in a primarily winter conditions where you have a lot of winter storms and especially if you have a rear wheel drive, I highly recommend you get winter tires. Those are really helpful in snow. Another thing is your windshield uh, wiper fluid. Uh, if you live in sub-zero temperatures all the time, um, I recommend get a windshield fluid that is rated for those sub-zero temperatures and then fill that up. Because um, last thing you want is putting on the windshield fluid and then it's, it's your, your windshield is frozen. Uh, you don't want that to be happening. So make sure you get the rated windshield fluid for that. Finally, uh, here in Colorado, there are certain mountain towns. If I have to visit those towns, I have to have chains on my tire during the winter. So if you live in that area where chains are required, just check your laws and rules around where you live. Um, you might need chains. During freezing condition, you also want to ensure before you leave that nothing is frozen the essential parts of your car are not frozen for example the autopilot camera if you are going planning on using autopilot make sure that is not still frozen before you leave and then if your door handle is frozen tesla recommends just kind of pounding with your hand here um, to to unfreeze that break the ice and as well as your mirror if they are frozen defrost your car and then manually you can unfold and fold using the setting inside. Uh, but what I recommend is just in, in icy conditions when you're in winter, just make it so that your mirrors never fold uh, unless you really, really have to. Another thing that I recommend are these mud flaps. So as you see right here, these mud flaps do a really good job, uh, especially if you live in an area where they use salt to melt snow. 
um, it, it helps conserve your paint because it limits how much uh, how much splash you are gonna get in your paint so another thing that I highly highly recommend if your charge port is frozen uh, sometimes it does happen that you are unable to you know, open right now I can open this but it is frozen if you're unable to open use the defrost um, in your Tesla app or turn on the defroster to high inside your car to unfreeze the charge port just in general as i said before precondition your car um, make sure that your battery is at an optimal temperature and you should be good to go that'll do it for today's video i just wanted to provide you with some tips and tricks on winter driving conditions and what to look out for i hope you found this video helpful if you did please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you're new here please consider subscribing to my channel turn on the notification I have a lot more videos coming and we'll be covering a wide range of Tesla topics as I said in my intro. I thank you for your time. I'll see you in the next video. Namaste.